Since the death of 12-year-old Sylvester Oromane Jr., a student of Down College in Lekki, Lagos, several Nigerians have weighed in on the issue, calling on authorities to conduct a thorough investigation into the boy's death. The late Sylvester, who would have turned 13 last weekend, was allegedly bullied and beaten last week by senior students of the private boarding secondary school for refusing to join a cult. He was reported to have died from injuries injuries sustained from the beating. Following the incident, the Lagos state government ordered the indefinite closure of the school and launched a probe into the death of the young boy. Meanwhile, Sylvester's father, in an emotional interview on Arise News yesterday, insisted that his son was tortured to death and wondered how a school that charges so much for tuition was negligent and paid scant attention to students' welfare. He said, he did not play any football with any friends. That he did not even fall. He was in his room in the evening, although he did not give us the time, in the evening, with his friend. He was lying on his bed. Is this the okay. He was lying on his bed. He was lying on his bed. His friends were sitting on their bed. They were existing. Then these boys walked in, five of them walked in into the room and when they walked in he said they were the serious students then he has not mentioned their name when they walked in the one of them went back and put up the light put up the light he did not mention who put up the light so but one of them went back and put up the light but they were holding bed they started beating him. They flung him. He fell off from his bed and they started mashing him. Mashing him. All of them they started mashing him. They bullied him. In fact, he said that all these pains he was having all over his body, his head everywhere, was as a result of the beating. That he did not play any ball. He did not play any ball. Then he said, well, after beating, they not forced him to drink something. The boy said, okay, did you know the type of thing they give to you to drink? He said it was dark. That, but when he was making this statement, he would talk. I would make, ah, ah, then he would continue again. He said they gave him something to drink, but he could not describe what they gave to him to drink. The lights were off. The, the light were off. He did not see the thing they gave to him to drink. That they forced something inside his mouth and he drank something to give to him. Please, thorough investigation is what I want. When the school is saying that it was as a result of football or he fell uh, on the football pitch, I don't think that statement is true. Please, I want thorough investigation before he, he died. Those were the messages I sent to them. I sent to them. So when the woman told me, why did I send those pictures to the public? I told you, madam, you issued a, a statement that my boy uh, died as a result of uh, football injury. I have to say, if football can cause damage somebody's mouth, damage somebody's body like this, we make somebody to be shouted all over his body, I think Nigeria should know that. Look at the situation the boy passed through. Joining us now to discuss the late Sylvester's death and what teachers and parents need to do to stem the prevalence of bullying and violence in schools is Taiwo Akinlami, a lawyer and UNICEF advisor on child protection, rights enlightenment, education curriculum development and youth training. Mr. Akinlami himself is a survivor of dehumanizing abuse as a child. Welcome to the show, Mr. Akinlami. Good morning. Uh, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today. Well, very sad story has generated uh, outrage out there uh, in all, uh, at all levels of society. Uh, what's your reaction to this first, very sad story? First, let me commiserate with uh, father or the family of the deceased. You know, uh, in a sense, I think I feel the pain of a father who lost a child who had become 13 or 12 before he was killed. My wife and I welcomed our first child after 15 years of marriage, just six weeks ago. And I can, I understand the way I feel towards that child, just six weeks. Not to talk of a man who raised a child or a mother for 12 years, 
and life is knocked out of the child in a place where it's supposed to be the safest place for the child. Sent his son to school to receive education, not to receive death. I think that is condemnable. And it is important to note that death of children within the school system is becoming a reoccurring decimal within, this, within the school system. The last 15 years, I've taken time to study circumstances under which children have died in schools, beginning from Morenika Arulogu, who died in Faith Academy in 2008 under you know, circumstances that were, subject to, were subjected to court to interpret. Uh, I found something very disturbing, that schools are not doing enough to ensure they put in place a protective environment for children. If five boys come into a room to meet a boy and they began to beat him as the father as alleged, where, who was in charge of the school? Who was the housemaster? Where were the caregivers? Were those children supposed to be left on their own and um, they could do and undo? If they were in a motor park garage, what would have been the difference? If we're on the street where no man's land and everyone to himself, for himself, God for us all, what would have been the difference? It means that the school failed woefully in providing a secured and friendly environment for the children. Not only that, they also failed in ensuring that they intervene on time when that incident was taking place. So you've pointed out to the lack of adult supervision, and that's yeah. the fault of the school. Let's also talk about the allegations that Sylvester's father made of a cover-up. And cover-ups are often even worse than the crime itself. Mm -hmm. What do you make of this story that the father was fed about how he was playing well, football? Well, in a nation of cover-up, it, it is in this country that people were killed at Lekito Gates. And to today, the, the government is still telling us that nobody was killed, even after their own panel that they set up found that people were killed. It's this same government, this government. So when you, when you see a particular attitude being exhibited by government, you expect that there will be follow up you know, by other members of society. So you look at you know, what the school has done. It is typical of how schools respond. Look at the child who died, who, who died in Abuja. The parents alleged that when the child was brought home, they found condom in a private part. And the school denied that it never happened. Investigation revealed, uh, autopsy report revealed that that was true. Now, you are saying that a child was playing football. Now, if they were playing football, they are exercising their right to play. Is that not so? If they are exercising their right to play, children have the right to play under the law. They do not have right to unsupervised play. If they were playing football on the field and somebody is there and the football was becoming dangerous and somebody was becoming a bully in the presence of playing football, who intervened? Because it is possible that people are playing football and somebody becomes you know, uh, uh, violent in the process. But where were you, you know, when you know, all of that was happening? And that is the action of schools most of the time. And that brings me to the fact that we now wonder, why do you run a school? Most of the people who run school, I think they are more interested in the protection of the name of their school than the welfare of the children. If you are a father, you are a mother, and a child dies in your school, the first thing is to come out and deny. And I read again yesterday that the father of the child said, till today, they are yet to receive a call. They are yet to receive a team from Darwin College commiserating with them, visiting them as a family, till today. Mm. That is shocking. Yes. So in all of this, I, I think we just need to unpack this properly. The father of the boy made very strong allegations. Yes. Number one, his child was bitten. Mm -hmm. He said his child said this as his child was dying. Mm -hmm. Number two, he was given a poisonous substance mm -hmm. because he said the doctor said the liver of yes. the child was swollen. Yes. And we all know the liver being a very resilient organ. For yes. a liver to be damaged in the space of two, three days, <laughs> then that's a very poisonous substance. Number three, they mentioned the names of three boys. Mm -hmm. Where are those boys today? Mm -hmm. Have they been called in for investigation? Have those boys told their own side of the story? Well, I think that uh, the Lagos State uh, Police Command has issued um, a statement that they are investigating the matter, that the matter is under investigation. There are rumors that these children have been flown out of the country, maybe all of them or one of them or two of them. Uh, I believe that the police will come through with its investigation in the light of public, uh, public outcry that justice must be done in the sense that if children commit crimes, they are not exonerated from from the justice system just because they are children. They are called children in conflict with the law. They are not 
they are not, the only thing is that they are not tried the way, you know, uh, adults are tried, but they, they experience, they have their day with the court, with the judicial system, with the justice system. So I think that we must insist, you know, call upon the police to do their work and insist that these children must be, must be brought to book. Uh, they, they, must be, they, must be, they must be picked up. They must be asked questions. They must, you know, tell their own side of the story. The fundamental thing is that it's not easy for life to be snuffed out of someone. When you subject someone to a type of treatment that brings him to a point where uh, it became uh, his liver, you know, swole, uh, to a point that his mouth was battered as if it was the, the, the substance that he drank that messed up his mouth, you know, and all of that. There, someone must be asking questions, uh, must be answering questions, but those who should also be answering questions are the people under whose care the child was at the time that thing happened. Because when you drop your child with a school, the, child, the school has a duty of care to protect those children. When something happens in the school system, you, when you are not there to prevent it, you become an accomplice. You become an accomplice in the matter. So, so in, in that case, so the culprits here are the people who perpetrated the act, the people who were supposed, who had the duty of care to protect that child, who dropped the ball. As a matter of fact, they have criminal responsibility. They have case, many cases to answer as to how they dropped the ball, that the, the, the child under their care was, was brutalized, beaten, and, uh, and dehumanized and killed. I, I, I think the corporates are many. So it's, it does not lie in the mouth of the school to say they were playing football. You know, in the other day in Ogun, in uh, Edo State, there was this video that went viral of seniors, you know, supposed senior who were beating, you know, some juniors. And the response of the Edo State government was to sack the principal. Then the question is, when we fire the principal or you lock down the school, what is going to be the condition on which you are going to reopen the school? What, where were the people that were responsible for taking care of this child when you know, that happened? So the school in this matter is an accessory before the fact. Number two, they are now accessory after the fact because they are trying to deny the fact. Okay, uh, just by way of uh, update, yes. we know that the uh, state authorities have shut down the school. Yes, sir. Two, that both the police and the uh, Lagos State Ministry of uh, Education mm -hmm. have launched an investigation. Mm -hmm. uh, three, we also know that, uh, well, the school issued a statement on November 4, mm -hmm. uh, on December 4, mm -hmm. and it's almost a week mm -hmm. after the incident mm -hmm. occurred. Uh, you know, people have commented on that, that mm -hmm. uh, it took the school almost a week mm -hmm. to even say anything, mm -hmm. to come even commiserate with the uh, family. Mm -hmm. And if the school has not visited the family, I think they should do so. But the issue I wanted to bring up is about the role of the state. Many families send these children, uh, children to private schools. They're mm -hmm. expensive, they are prestigious. But do you think that in the many cases that we have seen, uh, isn't there something about negligence on the part of state authorities in terms of maintaining standards. Yes. Before now, there was the Deepa uh, Life uh, yes. High School yes. in Uyo yes. involving a boy uh, called Don Davis, yes. whose mom raised the issue about, uh, about uh, sodomy. Mm -hmm. Then there is a case in June uh, of the uh, Premier School mm -hmm. uh, in Lube Abuja yes. of the lady you know, was sexually assaulted and all of that. And that was as far back as June. We're just getting to know about it because of this other incident. And then in this particular Dowen College, one of the reactions from the parents uh, indicated that, look, the uh, school authorities do not even allow the establishment of a parents' teachers' association. Yes. And yet we have a Ministry of Education, where that Ministry of Education has inspectorate division, mm -hmm. I guess is the case across the country. Do you think that, you know, that we're dealing also with negligence on the part of the state to um, maintain standards? Yes, there are four rings of protection. Uh, the first one is the family, the second one is the community, the third one is the state. The state provides the level playing field. The state provides, promulgates laws promulgate policies, ensures that those policies are followed. The fundamental thing is that the state plays two roles in, this, in, in the educational sector in Nigeria to a very large extent. They run their own schools. They also re provide regulatory oversight over schools. 
In both instances, as I think the state has failed woefully. Uh, for example, in Lagos State, you have 1,900 public schools competing with over 18,000 private schools. And um, when you are not able to, you, when you are not able to do well in the role of providing education, what is the what is the assurance that you're going to do well in your role of regulating education? Mm. So they failed woefully. 13.5 million children are out of school. They failed woefully in providing education, which is one of their roles. Even go to their schools, look at the way the schools look. We've seen gory pictures, sad pictures of children learning under, you know, bizarre circumstances. So if you have your own property, I have my own jacket, I cannot run it very well. You now came to give me your own jacket to, to keep for you. If you keep your jacket with me, you must be foolish because you can see the way I'm doing my own. I'm running my own. So the problem is that the state has failed woefully. Now let me give you a quick example. In 2016, I was invited by the Lagos state government to work with them to develop a child protection system for the entire, for the entire Lagos state, a child protection system codified into policies. And I worked with the Lagos state government in 2016 pro bono, you know, on that project. We came together. We we, we did that project. When we finished, the Lagos State Governor, uh, Aki Wumeambo, they promulgated that child protection policy into a state executive order. And I was co-opted into the committee to oversee the, the implementation of that policy. We had our first meeting in January 2017, which has been our last meeting. And in that meeting, I asked the question, from the head of the committee in the Ministry of Youth and Social Development. What is your budget for the implementation of this policy? It's not enough for the governor to call a press conference for the purpose of you know, signing into law an executive order we, in pursuant to the child's right law of Lagos State, which brings to, which says everywhere children are gathered, it's now mandatory for you to have a child protection system codified into policy, broken down into processes on which everybody is trained. The head of the committee told me shockingly, we have no budget. I said, how come you don't have budget for something you called a press conference for? They said the budget has passed before the governor signed that thing into law. So I said, only one lady, Lola uh, uh, Adeni, who is from the, uh, who is the executive secretary of uh, uh, DSVRA now, who said, okay, I will see what I can do. I'll talk to my attorney general and see what we can do. Nothing has been done apart from the little efforts that that lady did. When this governor was going to come into power, I was invited, you know, uh, uh, school leaders met with him. And I told him, I said, one of the problems that we are dealing with is that your, 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 your soon-to-be predecessor signed an executive order. And that executive order has not seen the light of day. It's not been implemented. He said, when I get to the office, it's one of the first things that will address. It's been in office since when? Now, you go and shut down a school when you have a policy in place that you are not implementing, your own policy that you drafted, that you, that, 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 that you, 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 you did a press conference. Government is supposed to be continuum. If Amber Day signed it, it's supposed to be your policy. Where is that policy today? The effort to review that policy today is by DSVRA. And I'm asking them when they invited me for review. I said, how do we begin to review a policy that we have not implemented? How do we know where the policy has done well or has not done well? Let me quickly say that if you are running a school today, and you are running a religious place of worship, the position is mandatory in Lagos State, for example, for you to have in place a child protection system codified into policies, broken down into processes on which everybody is trained periodically. And that policy must be subject to review. And there is a template that we created. I worked on, on that policy, not only me, with other people, pro bono. I didn't charge Lagos State government one naira. I did that because I have been crying to say we should have such. And when they went to do it, they said, this is what you have been talking about. Let's do it. And I made myself available for months. But today, that has not seen the light of this. The question we have to ask today, the corporate in this matter are many. The Lagos State government is a corporate. The, the school is a corporate. The parents are even corporate because if you send your child to a school, look, look at Sylvester's story. The boy has been complaining. This is what they did to me. Daddy, I don't feel like going to school. I'm sad that I'm going to school. Those were pointers to the fact that, those were red flags to the fact that the child was not having the best experience in that school. But at the end of the day, we still sent him to the school. At the end of the day, he met his test. The, the parents, you send your children to school, do you ask them, do you have in place a child protection system codified into policy? You know, you come here, you bring us British curriculum. You are running British curriculum, but you don't run a system that protects children. Hmm. The, where you borrow the British curriculum from, 
or the finished curriculum, do they run their schools without policies that protect children that is reviewed from time to time? I can count on my fingertips today in Lagos State. Schools that have, you know, child protection system codified into policies, broken down into processes on which everybody is trained. And the truth of the matter is that nobody is holding anybody accountable. I can assure you. Doan College, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a public domain. I think the most they want to do now is to be going around to press buttons. Children have died in different schools. I've investigated. Let me give you a quick example. A child is asthmatic in a school. The mother still called me yesterday. In a school, and I'm aware of the case. A child was asthmatic in a school. And so the child had an attack on Sunday in a boarding school. And the doctor was called. The doctor said he was busy somewhere. Called the matron, who is not a nurse, is not a medical personnel, personnel said, just take the needle. Let me put you through how to inject this boy. I'm telling you true life story in Nigeria. <laughs> Let me tell you, that intravenous in the injection oh was put straight onto the body of the boy. The boy, the boy died immediately. Oh that is something that happened in a school in Nigeria. The school is still running. Nothing has happened. The parents, you know, have made the little noise they could make. Did that come to the fore? A school is located somewhere in this Lagos. Then in the evening, children were playing. This child hit his head, forehead on the bunk of the bed. The school is located somewhere. The hospital of first responder was located one and a half hours from the school. When the boy hit his head, these were things that were uh, within public domain. Lagos State Government conducted a corona inquiry on this case. A, the, boy, the boy was brought to the hospital one and a half hours from the school. Of course, nobody knew how to stop the blood. Nobody knew how to do first aid. Nobody knew how to do CPR. This boy was rushed to the hospital. Of course, he was pronounced dead. And the school was still saying something. And at the end of the day, the parents... Uh, he requested for a, a, a commission of inquiry, a, 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 a corona inquiry. That corona inquiry was done, found the school guilty. The school is still running. So, so I can continue to give you, ex what about the Arulo Goons? Look at what their children went through. It was then discovered that that school that was running a boarding school was not registered with the Ogun State Government to even run a boarding school. And their child died, a child was ill in school, went to the nurse, went to the, went to the, sick uh, to, to sick bay, they, they gave her medication, she came back the second day and said she has misplaced the medication, they still gave her another one. If you give your child is living with you, and you, don't you know the way of children with drugs, with, with medication, they don't want to take it, it's bitter and all of that, they don't even want to take injection. If a child comes back to say, I, I misplaced my medication, what are you supposed to do? You gave him another one. This boy, was, this child will sit in class because this, the, there is AC in the class. The child would go back to the back of the class, would be sleeping during, during, during class. They did not call the parents until four days or five days after. The, boy, the child became delirious. They, they, they rushed her to the hospital. This child died. Arulo case with the public sector. What about Eze Chidinju? Eze Chidinju was in a school where he did not register to be a member. He did not register to be a member of the swimming club. But he found his way into the swimming club. He was taken to the swimming place where they were going to swim. And when they were swimming, all the children were, were, were in the water. Over 50 children inside water. They were, they were swimming. And as they were swimming, the person that was supposed to the, the, the lifeguards were not there that day. It was raining. And the person who took them there took a, took a walk. Then one child that knew how to swim swam to the eight feet. And when he got there, he saw a child. He saw a child there that was gasping for breath. Of course, they brought him out, rushed him to the hospital. Now, now, this is the point. When the boy, when the boy who found that boy that was dying, shouted the first time, called for him, nobody was inside. Which means the person who took them there are taking a walk. At the end of the day, the boy died. What has happened? These are cases, litany of cases, under circumstances under which children have died. Some of them came to the, to, the, to the public domain. Some of them did not come to the public domain. What have we done? So what is going to happen is that we're going to make noise like this. Yes. A few months down the line, it's going to stop trending. One way or the other, Doan College will go and sort out itself, then will reopen. If you are saying you want to set up commission of inquiry, what is the work? Oh, sorry. What is the work of the commission of inquiry? What do they want to do? Is there a way to protect children globally? In UAE, U U United Arab Emirates, yeah. You cannot run a school without a child protection system. The other day I was in the US. My sister took me to the child school and said, this, my brother is coming to pick my child for me after school. They said, have you feel from, from the blue form? My sister said, which one is the blue form? He said, my sister has a normal Nigerian. said, well, well I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't have time. I'm going to work. This, my brother, I must come to pick the child. He said, man, you have to take your child back home. Because until you feel that form, what is that form? You feel the form? My ID card is attached. 
When I come to pick the child, my, my sister will have signed that form. And when I query the woman, the woman said, this is the normal practice. It's not me. This is the position of the education district. You know, for this is what we must do. Here, government schools are not regulated. No child protection policy. I challenge anybody. I'm, 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 to a public debate, tell me, even schools here that are, that are collecting six figures uh, school fees, they should come and show us. What I'm asking them to show us now is to show us their child protection policy, child protection system, codified into policies, broken down into processes on which everybody is trained, which means you know what to do. You know, you know because the purpose of that, you know, let me tell you a statement that a woman made, Ellen King. She's the consultant to UNICEF on child safety in the Caribbean. She made a statement, which I love so much. It says, since children, spend, since children spend a significant amount of their childhood in school, it is for this reason, if no other, that school should be warm, caring and nurturing places. When children feel protected and they feel supported, indeed research has shown that when children feel connected to school, they have better learning and behavioral outcomes. So what she say? School, what is the purpose of school? Better learning and behavioral outcomes. How do you achieve that? Children must be connected to school. How do children become connected to school? They must feel protected, they must feel supported. How do they become, how do they feel supported and protected? They must, the school must be warm. Caring and nurturing places, and let me conclude by defining care. To care is to anticipate the needs of children, to anticipate the threat to them, to now make adequate preparation to meet those needs and mitigate those threats well before they arise. That is the meaning of care. It's not that you continue to run around at et a sketcher. This studio has a system of admission. You admitted me into this place through a system. This place that we're having this, this program has a system that is running it. Imagine that we want, we, we say we're Arise TV, we want to run an organization. There's no system of recording. There's no system of interview. You, you, you put people outside, you say that's why we should be having the program. Can it happen? That's what schools are doing, forgetting that the number one responsibility of a school is not to teach, it is to protect. Because once children are not safe, education cannot take place. Some robbers visited me before. That time that they were visiting me, put a gun in my head, the, last, the longest 30, min 30 minutes of my life was not the time I remember Psalm 31. Was not the time I remember Psalm 23 or Psalm 91. Either dwell in the secret place or the most high. Was, was not. And some of the people who have policy, they have embraced one safe, forever safe. We, 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 because they are saying we should do policy. We do policy. We just put it under the cooler, put ice water. And, and lock it up in the, in the office of the principal. And that, those policies, those systems are not running anything. Mr. Kename, these are such important points that you've made. It's completely devastating to know what Nigerian children go through. There's more than enough blame to go around. I want to also talk about the parents. Yeah. Look at how what you have said actually explains to me why the initial response from Doran College was, well, Zoom classes will continue. That callousness mm -hmm. of the initial mm -hmm. response, mm -hmm. this is why. Mm -hmm. This is the attitude. But parents as well. When you recall the anti-cultism law in Lagos State mm -hmm. that was passed earlier this mm -hmm. year, and there was a bit of controversy because mm -hmm. the law contained a clause whereby parents of children who are found to be cultists mm -hmm. are liable to, I think, two years in prison mm -hmm. or 500,000 mm -hmm. naira fine. Mm -hmm. And people were saying, well, you can't blame the parents. I mm -hmm. want your take on parents. Who okay. parents these bullies, these mm. vicious bullies? OK, well, number one is the fact that our children are beneficiaries or victims of our examples. Mm. Whatever you see, you see children do, they copy. The child lines by it, imitation, Aristotle. Yes, yes. So now, Abraham Lincoln says, how do you train a child the way you should go? You go there first and come back and take the child with you. In a nation of violence, where you are watching news with your child, news is supposed to be safe. Hmm. And your child says, well, this will be said, there are people, National Assembly people, there are, there are they are honorable people. So, Daddy, what does it mean to be honorable? People of dignity and honor. <laughs> this place they are going to, what is it called? It's called uh, hallowed chamber. chamber. So, what does it mean to be hallowed? Don't you know what we say? Hallowed be thy name. Very, yeah. you know, a, a, a very, you know, honorable, revered place. So, ah, Daddy, I want to be a senator one day. And they got in there. Somebody moves a motion that somebody is not happy with. The next thing is to begin to slap each other. And they are fighting and they are tying each other's clothes. And the child is saying, Daddy, what's going on? A six year old boy was asked in this country, What will you do if you become the president of Nigeria? He said, I will buy one car for my daddy, I will buy one for my mommy, I will buy one for myself, and I will resign. And the father said, Mr. Akinami, what's my son say? I said, Don't your son follow you in the morning when you are taking him to school and he's listening to those newspaper reviews? Is he that snake ate money somewhere? Is he that there's something, somebody called political godfather, political godmother? Yes. The boy is saying, Daddy, you are the political godfather. Mommy, you are the political godmother. Once I, once I satisfy you and I satisfy myself, I'll be fine. He's saying that, Look, 
I have siblings. Those ones are citizens. I don't care about them. So the fundamental thing is that parents have a lot of role to play in all of this. Parents in Nigeria, I feel for parents. You know, because there are four rings that are supposed to raise children. Only one is functional here, the family. They are the one paying school fees. They are the one paying house rent. Parents are distracted. It's easy for us to call for the head of parents. But do you know what parents are going through? Do you know what they are paying as school fees? Their counterparts in other countries are receiving support. They have not received any support. So parents are going through a lot. But having said that, if you have brought children to this world, it's your responsibility mm. to try to see what you can do to protect them. And that is why I'm saying, sometimes it's, not, it's even ignorance. A woman called me many years ago. Can I send my eight-year-old to a boarding school? I said, madam, that's a question I cannot answer because I don't have enough facts to be able to answer that question. She said, why? I said, one, number one, that child, eight-year-old, is she old enough to defend herself? Number two, does she represent the, the, the value system of the family? Number three, our friends are going to become our primary influence. Is she strong enough, a voice, to be able to speak up and fend for herself even before help comes? I said, it's something I need to go and think about. And I created a material, which I call 11 questions to ask before you, you send your child to a boarding school. The question today is that how many parents are aware of the questions to ask when they take mm. their children to boarding school? You know, you just take them there. You know, the other day I was in a boarding school. Okay, let me leave that story. All right, please. Can you assure us, I, I know it's stupid the question I'm mm. asking, but can you assure us, based on all you've seen, that Sylvester will not die in vain? Because it looks as though, with mm -hmm. all you have said, mm -hmm. it, 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 that might be the case mm -hmm. with Sylvester. Mm -hmm. Can you assure us that everything will be done, that yes. Sylvester will not die in vain? I think there are two ways to it. Uh, vigilance is the price of liberty. There's two ways to it. We have to follow this case, insist. The investigation that the Lagos State Government is doing, we have to insist. If it is true that some children who have been alleged to have participated in the killing, in the bullying that led to the killing, have left the country, we must insist that they must be returned back to this country. We must ask, we must write to the embassies of the, of, of the countries that are accommodating these children right now to let them know what has happened. That's number one. Number two is the fact that how do we prevent this case? Because it's preventable. It's for parents to ask questions, to insist. I say, if you are running a school, you are running a religious place of worship, and you don't have in place a child protection system codified into policies on which everybody is trained, regularly to know their roles, and that policy is subject to review, you are running a potential crime scene. Don't be surprised. Crime will happen in the scene for crime. So the problem is that we have to arise as a people and begin to ask questions. Ask questions from government. What is the policy in your school to, to, to protect children? Ask government. Ask, you see, if, I'm, if I register my child in a private school, I'm a customer. A customer should be able to ask questions. Please do have in place a policy you know, that we are talking about, a system codified into policy. I think that is the way to go about it. One, we must insist that justice is done in this matter. It's not soft under the carpet, but the question again is that the society have the, the, the capacity, the history, the precedence of following the matter to conclusion. We just wait for another no. news to break and something is going to happen. That's it. The, the number two, I fear that that's the trend in society. Number two is the fact that your school is shut down. And you are saying school is going to continue online. That is your first response. I mean, that is appalling. E even if you, oh my God, even if you have lost your humanity as a person, as an institution of learning, when you're supposed to communicate value to children, communicate, communicate kindness, you know, to them, and you're, what you are thinking is that how things are going to continue. Why we are not saying the life of everybody within the school system should be put on hold? We are saying that justice has put the life of that family on injustice. We put the life of that family on hold because the family will be interested in the closure. Look at what the father is saying. Tell me what happened to my son. Don't tell me it is football. You know, you made a statement when we were starting. Cover up is worse than the crime itself. A child has died. You have not even had the, 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 the human kindness to say that we are sorry. That is what the Arulo Goods were fighting for. School, say sorry to us. It asked me, say sorry. I mean, let us know that you why have human why feelings. Why we have that society where we, we can just say sorry? Why? They can't. They can't because why? they try to cover things up. So for me, for me, the way forward is that justice must be done to, to Sylvester. Beyond that, how do we ensure 
that this does not happen again. I call for a commission of inquiry if it is possible for deaths that happen within the school system in the last 15 years. You will see that heads will roll. It doesn't begin with, it doesn't begin with, uh, it doesn't begin with, uh, with, um, with, with Sylvester. And let me tell you, time does not run against this type of crime. So it, people can still be brought to books. Schools can still be called to question. Until we do that, if there's going to be healing, we can't just be going. We have to look at where we are coming from. You know, you call it maybe Peace Commission, School Safety Commission. How do we ensure that we revisit these cases where children have died? And those who are responsible are brought to book. Apart from being brought to book, we now create a system that ensures the safety well, of children. I don't think in anybody can argue with you. There's a hashtag out there, mm. hashtag justice for Sylvester. Yes. And although families may be victims, some families are also part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Very dysfunctional families yes. mm -hmm. uh, with parents uh, taking their eyes uh, mm -hmm. of their own duties mm -hmm. and also believing that the more expensive a school is, yes. the better the quality mm -hmm. of education mm -hmm. that a child will receive in mm -hmm. such schools. So it's not about money. Yes. It's also about parental responsibility in you. many ways. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you so much for Thank you. Congratulations on the birth of your baby. Thank you very much.